Ok, entonces ahora sí que sí. Buenos días a todos. Qué bueno verle las caras nuevamente. Eh, hoy día es el día en que oficialmente comienza todo de lleno. Y partimos, como todos los años, es un poco tradición, con una mirada de lo que es eh, el contexto latinoamericano o Latinoamérica hoy. Y hoy día tenemos como invitado a Javier Ibacache. Javier Ibacache es un crítico de artes escénicas y es el eh, ex director de programación y audiencias de este lugar, de GAM. Así que tiene una mirada eh, particular, muy interesante. Y eh, eso, bueno, y avisarles que después cuando él termine, aquí mismo es la inauguración oficial. Así que vamos a tener cinco minutitos para salir, volver y seguimos adelante. Que disfruten. Bien, eh, bueno, muchas gracias eh, por estar acá. Sé que no es fácil llegar a las 10 de la mañana eh, o incluso antes de las 11 de la mañana a una actividad cuando hay eh, tantas funciones de noche. Eh, bueno, les quiero comentar que la presentación que me han invitado a hacer es principalmente eh, dar un contexto o dar eh, pautas eh, o posibles lecturas que sirvan de contexto para pensar la selección de obras que participan en el Festival Santiago Mil, especialmente durante esta semana, eh, con el énfasis puesto en la generación chilena, por una parte, y también eh, siendo quizá un poco pretencioso, teniendo una mirada más hacia el teatro latinoamericano. Eh, les quiero comentar desde, desde dónde yo hablo. Eh, yo soy crítico de teatro, he trabajado como crítico, he desempeñado como tal desde los años 90, eh, Tuve la oportunidad de precisamente la puesta en marcha del festival Teatro Mil y desde ese lugar también he podido seguir las transformaciones, el cambio, el relevo que se ha venido dando en el teatro en Chile. Esta presentación, eh, por lo tanto, apunta principalmente a pensar lo que hoy se está haciendo en Chile, cuáles serían las principales hitos, pero poniéndolo en perspectiva. Eh, por eso me interesa partir eh, hablando de una, haciendo referencia a una obra que lamentablemente ustedes no verán esta semana, porque estuvo la semana pasada con el festival, el festival, que es La viuda de la Pablaza. Eh, la menciono porque esta es la obra más significativa en términos de dramaturgos en la historia del teatro chileno. Es una obra de los años 20, una obra que es visionaria en cuanto a la definición de identidad. Fue escrita por un dramaturgo en lo que fue el esplendor de los años 20, particularmente de públicos del teatro en Chile, de Marco Cruz Chaga cumpliendo eh, por estos días alrededor de, se, se conmemoran 90 años de, de su estreno. Eh, es una obra significativa, ¿por qué? Eh, porque es una obra que se ambienta en la frontera, en la zona de la frontera eh, de la Araucanía. Es una obra que muestra a una viuda, a una mujer muy fuerte, eh, una suerte de cedra para el repertorio chileno, eh, y muestra el vínculo que ella establece con su hijastro y cómo de alguna manera eh, obliga a ese hijastro a casarse con ella. Eh, esta obra ha sido vista también no solo como una obra que describe las relaciones eh, de género en Chile, sino también como una obra que muestra el cambio en la composición socioeconómica, eh, como una clase desplaza a otra. Y es fundacional porque podríamos decir que todo lo que viene después la década de los 20 en Chile, en términos de vínculos sociales, lo podemos mirar desde esta obra. Por eso eh, ha sido interesante haberla tenido como parte del festival, eh, en una versión dirigida por Rodrigo Pérez, que marca todo de hecho el habla popular y el habla original, conceptualizada por Catalina Saavedra, ya que es algo así como un espejo que nos está pensando el teatro de hoy. ¿Por qué es relevante? Porque hay al menos en las últimas dos décadas eh, dos textos que son también muy eh, 
very significant in order to understand the complexities and tensions of civil society. And from there on, think theatre, which is being presented in this context. A fundamental piece of reflections about the civil society is the book of Antipolitan and Wachos, which was published in 1981, when Chile was coming out of the dictatorship of getting into the process of transition. This book thinks about the social relationships from the process of transition. The mestizos, the feminines and the masculine, thinking how in practice in Chile, because of this process of mixing of the mestizos, the feminine part is defined from maternity and the masculine part from the absence of the father, thought as the absence of the father, or the passing of the wachos. This vision is not only translated in symbolic ways, we have seen in many plays in artistic creation, but it also explains a lot of the social problems which have been diagnosed in the 90s, especially in relationship to the absent father and to the category of legitimate children which existed till the end of the 90s. This constitution something typical for Latin America here in Chile it was very present in the social relationships in the icons of these figures in the story think of that the father of Chile of Higgins is an abandoned son technically speaking he's a bastard or a son it is a very used expression Wacha to disqualify people. The widow of Abraza installs a relationship between the widow and this bastard, the illegitimate son of uh, her. Eh, figuras tan relevantes Husband. como un futbolista eh, como Iván Zamorano, que en la década de los 90 like fue un star like Iván Zamorano, también uno lo podía ver desde el punto de vista de héroe, que viene a validarse de la identidad de la absencia del padre. Esta, la, la publicación de Madres y Guachos del año 91 fue publicada por el año 91, among the artists as a sort of framework for reflection on ourselves and the plays which we could not understand without this context. One of them is precisely the series of plays done by the director Alfredo Castro, who had received an homage at this festival, and whose company, uh, the Memoria, in the 90s, one year after the premiere of Mothers and Wachos presents this play which is called uh, The Story of the Blood, Historia de la Sangre, which is a play of testimonies, uh, others of passionate crimes in a format in the language which we could recognize, we could, uh, recognize an Archodian style, but for Chile it's very difficult to translate. What we most saw in the story of testimonies of this author's passion for us was precisely uh, to suffer from the abandonment of the father, once again the uh, bastard of the Wacho. If we look at it this way, then we see certain lines of people in the theatre, and we can see that we can find that today also in this day, the 90s are very significant in order to think uh, of our theatre. The same director, Alfredo Castro, 1997, a uh, version of the uh, um, José Donoso, which is called uh, Lugar Sin Limites, written by a Chilean playwright, Juan Claudio Burgos. This version very much discussed, which is called Casa de Luna. And here again, these subjects turn up the uh, absence of the father, but here, uh, put into discussion with identity and especially gender identity. I stipulate 
explained that coincidentally in What happened afterwards is that uh, from the 2000s on, what we have is the institutionalization of the theater in the sense that um, there is a platform developed uh, to allow then the for an institutionalization, culturally speaking, there is lines from the state uh, that was um, enhanced that uh, and numerically we come from the 750,000 spectators at the end of the 90s up to 1.6 million spectators in 2015. That is to say, there is at least a movement, significantly speaking, that uh, allows us then uh, to verify in 180 uh, premieres or releases uh, that we have uh, only in the metropolitan region. But there are also some questions coming, uh, which is whether I would like then to focus the selection of um, plays uh, that, uh, um, that you are going to be seeing. So within the same context, uh, the context that uh, you work here uh, as well, it is not clear in Chile what we call contemporary when we talk about, about contemporary um, theater or contemporary dance. <coughs> Fortunately, the have been in the last years, lately, a renewal of uh, researchers uh, that are trying to put into discussion these visions. And uh, this is a definition, at least, or a proposal of a thought of this uh, contemporary 
Universite Theatre of a young researcher Ivan Sousa that published this in the Yedra journal. I believe the only one that is uh, accounting for the whole scene, particularly out of the official thing. It is very important, this journal from this uh, prison, but it is also interesting because it generates uh, room for reflection. And this definition that you can read here, in terms of the contemporary theatre, would be a theatre that puts aside on time and um, not only in the problem areas, but in the tension between the material and the epoch you're living in. So this is fundamental to understand the selection of uh, plays that are in Santiago Mil in this version this year. I would also say that we can think these uh, theaters, these plays, from this perspective. Theater as a discipline, as a field that puts into conversation and relationship some ideas from the memory, how memory constitute identity, the territory dialogues with this identity as well, and somehow we have the social utopias that are around here that have been somehow ruled out, but when we listen to um, the ideas of many plays, they are still present. So I would like then to, to address the six steps uh, that have been I, that have been important, still present in the, the series of national pieces that uh, we are going to have in this version of Santiago Amin. We call that the selection is done based on a jury that seized the plays in the last year, and another selection or some other pieces, another plays, I would say, that come from um, plays that have been invited by Fundación Teatro Mil. What can we say out of it? First of all, is that the verification that, in fact, today we can talk of a generation of relays. If we see in perspective all the plays that are there as part of the festival today in terms of the national selection, you can see that most of them, save for Rodrigo Perez and La Tropa Company, which is a um, invited for the homage of 25 years. Most of the other companies are companies that have been formed after the 2000. That is to say, we are in a new movement which is quite significant, quite consolidated and autonomous, statically speaking, that account for a new optics. This is also expressed socially. We can't leave aside thinking that we were talking about relay the last results of the presidential elections, where we also verify this new generation that tries uh, to open space for themselves. In theater, they are still more visible, at least in this election. It's quite interesting how this generation overcomes overcomes the past in terms of the topics that have been consecrated in the Chilean theatre. For example, this play, Locutorio, by Jorge Diaz, a very recognized playwright in the 50s and 60s, considered in Chile as the representative of the absurd theatre, um, has been directed uh, today by Christian Plana a director that we can say is post-2000, and he does it by doing language and material which uh, are characteristics of this contemporary theater. This other play, which is a work uh, based on a documentary theater between the Ictus Company, which is an emblematic here in Chile, not only before dictatorship, but fundamentally during dictatorship, as a resistance to the, uh, to the regime and restrictions, that today checks all this memory, but from the post-2000 perspective with Laura Palmer, the exercise it goes around the documentary theater. For me, 
this is the first indication of how this relay um, generation starts thinking from the scene, these big icons of the Chilean theater. Also, we have the prevalence of the feminine authors from 71 when we were talking, we were talking about a theater made by women. At least, for, for, at most, we had only one case, that is to say, was Cariño Malo. Today, fortunately, and probably, uh, that is something of a mirror on the governments by President Michel Bachelet, there is a strong presence of women that they are rethinking contents and languages. One of the most significant ones is the company La Niña Horrible, the horrible girl, that performs uh, um, a place from uh, Carla Zuniga, and uh, her play was chosen last year as the best uh, playwright by the circle of critiques. And it's interesting how she, Carla Zuniga, in this company, The Horrible Girl, has consolidated a gender objects from a play of resistance vis-a-vis -vis the male optics with Javier Casanca. Both of them have modeled a theater which is very carefully done. I would say it is Baroque uh, in nature, but you can also see themes related to the role of women in the Chilean society, not, not as a denounce, not as an exposure of uh, different cases, but uh, from stories um, where there is uh, the prevalence of violence around the feminine themes. As Carla Zuniga, uh, this year, or last year, 2017, there is a strong presence of women in directing, in authoring, that account for another room, another place of topics that have been traditionally addressed by Uh, I would say, a patriarchal kind of optics. It is quite interesting if you see only from this perspective the amount of plays directed by women. We have Marily Fantes, and most of you know already, Trinidad Pires as well. But my impression is that there is a new generation of women that uh, have been even Uh, renewing somehow the language inside. In this selection as well, you can observe as well a research on the, the theatrical, theatrical uh, devices. What I mean, the, the ways and forms uh, and possibilities of generating forms in theater. And there you find this new line of uh, documentary sound theater um, done by Trinidad Pires with Daniel Maraboli in this play called End Thin, which is a very significant work where you can recognize and identify these different uh, tendencies. But also, you can also think on how Manuela Infantes, in this opportunity in the vegetable state, she explores in the, as well as the theater device, I would say. From the scene, she explores as a theater as a, um, a tool for reflection generation. She represents here, and she invites us to reflect which is the scenario that humankind Um, occupies today, it is an optics that uh, places anthropocentric point as scenario of, uh, I would say, overcome so far, but she does it from exploring that, um, exploring what the research indicates based on the, the research on plants, saying that these linkages are more ex exemplary than the ones done by human beings. So gender identity is very important as well, I would say, and as we We mentioned before in Madres and Watches, Madres and Bastards uh, um, by Sonia Montesinos. In Chile, still, 
we have a pending topic. How do we think this field? And I say before, in the a political campaign recently, the, the discussion was focused on the, the role of uh, the candidates based on legislating or not on, on, uh, on the gender identity. And there is then a discourse which is clearer uh, and we still don't know how it's going to uh, advance. But this questioning, and I wouldn't, I, I, I I, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't avoid saying what Alfredo Castro did previously, but in the last times, this has been quite clear in terms of how it's been addressed, particularly in this play, Dylan, by Bosco Cayo, who has been directed by Luchera de la Sota. And uh, he took the case of uh, the Red Chronicle in which uh, um, a transgender person has been killed, and uh, he takes this uh, uh, as a reference in order to think about all the fears that are still in the Chilean society based uh, or comparing the other, the otherness, let's say. So another important topic in this relation that we can see in how memory is then taken. Memory is recurring in the Chilean theater when we talk about memory, particularly we're talking about memory in terms of dictatorship today it is assumed as something giving, as a given fact, and lack of punishment here is then the optics in which memory uh, lies on. So we want to say here what um, uh, Odell play shows uh, that things about, uh, reflects about uh, the space, a uh, room where the, the authors of uh, some crimes, uh, of um, crimes against humanity are there um, not still punished. So this is uh, quite provoking that takes a human, so, sorry, black humor uh, takes it uh, to uh, another place, I would say provoking, Inter uh, that is to say calling to the public to react. And uh, it is quite significant because uh, this issue still is uh, a topic which is quite relevant for the Chilean society. And uh, a last I mentioned in terms of the selection of plays of Chilean theatre in Santiago Amil, I would say that um, goes to the territories in dispute, and not only in terms of migration, but um, in terms of uh, discourses vis-à-vis uh, -vis the vision of world, let's like just say literally what happens here in terms of dispute vis-à-vis -vis the other, maybe this, uh, this play by Cultivo Zoológico that shows a situation in which uh, uh, a, a case is taken that occurred uh, in a district in Santiago where I would say a kind of a bourgeoisie class uh, with lots of values um, is, is uh, confronted to the other, which is the con-national as well, but is occupying the same territory. What is triggered there? And from uh, the perspective of the other, it is quite interesting, this new play from Antimedo the Company, um, directed by Marilos Armasaba, it's called Opera, that uses precisely the figure of the classic spectator of opera in Chile, which is associated to a municipal theater that is, that is to say, is a kind of an elite kind of of, um, of uh, art expression, but this field then is uh, addressed from the historical point, that is to say, a Chilean um, playwright that uh, with a Chile, uh, an Italian company tried to perform and sh show a historical a historical um, story of, from the Mapuche point of view, 
So there is a kind of a weird uh, situation in how showing how opera as a Practic shows the original, uh, the original um, features of the country. Last, lastly, then we can talk about the last uh, um, speculation, let's say, that uh, allow us to infer from some uh, pieces, uh, um, some some pieces uh, taken from the continent that are present uh, in the selection as well. We can think that by looking at them in perspective, most of them. Um, we have the, the suspicion towards the future as a, a prevailing point, that is to say, what is the state of things, socially speaking and politically speaking, in our countries. Not only it is a suspicion towards the future as a perspective, but also in terms of uh, the uh, stories. So we can then agree that in most of these uh, uh, plays we see lack of trust in terms of the final discourses. Those who have seen um, this um, play by Hirsch, we can say that uh, these the three um, plays in 50 minutes, uh, what they do is uh, um, to make uh, so um, <coughs> so evident uh, this uh, what we see in literature showing this uh, contradiction in Latin America uh, towards the utopia that, uh, that it doesn't want to die, but it is already dead. Another way of confronting these pieces, the selection, I would say, correspond to the place that the spectator, the spectator takes the implicit spectator, I would say, and we can think that uh, these uh, displays coincide in thinking this spectator um, as a kind of a designer, a designer of the play. These uh, plays, uh, which are open from with too many different artists and prisms with different focuses, etc., they think themselves in terms of the fiction planes, regardless on how they are putting into the scene. We see lack of trust in terms of fiction or in terms of uh, having a, a or constructing something in the scene, let's say, so it gives the spectator a role of designer of the same material, I would say. And curiously, we have from different places, from different rooms, what we call the dystopic scenarios. And uh, I see it linked uh, with this lack of uh, this lack of uh, trust uh, for the future or the anguish of not having the possibility of trusting the future. And we have this new line that tries to reflect on how the possible future would be if other things would happen. We can see then astronauts or the future of the hippopotamus and uh, thinking or wondering whether in this uh, exercise we have a little bit of an anguish regarding what the future would be like or the possibility of thinking the future from another place. And certainly when we have this scenario of uh, untrust, let's say, um, towards the future, we have then to the withdrawal. And there is a kind of a theater on self-observation that is, is quite common today. Mar de Noche, the sea of the night, is a representative of this uh, um, in, uh, this kind of a place that uh, talks about uh, the voice of the consciousness of, a part of the character. But from this place, you can read them from the context. This place, the ocean of the night, let's say, uh, from uh, Losa, uh, talks about the abandonment, effective, effective abandonment of an old man. And we can see it in relation to the body. Uh, what the body means in a relationship, and we can speculate whether there is a reflection on what is the significance of the body, socially speaking. And last 
see, when we talk about Latin America, uh, we can't avoid talking about the origin, not only the problem areas of the First Nation, but uh, the visions, the, the cosmic visions uh, that uh, go beyond the contemporary. At least two plays, one from Mexico, the other one from Bolivia, that I believe that account for this and uh, they coexist with this premiere of Juan Villoro. I play um, about uh, the dilemma and the movement of Mars, but it is a discussion of the male condition which is taken into the scene by a Chilean director and makes us think and wonder on the basis of modernity, the ideas that prevailed in the construction of Latin American nations and the ideas that are still being projected that are under tension today. And then we had the other part, which is the creation that takes uh, 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 take us all into a new, uh, another kind of cosmovision. And we have the figure that we had at the beginning, the figure of the mother as a significant figure. I wouldn't like to um, end uh, this lecture without this uh, quote, which is, I believe is very important, particularly when there is a, a um, a room of programmers of uh, dance and theater. Because lastly, this lack of trust into the future, this anguish vis a vis the possibilities that the future poses, has all, have also meant to, to replace what the um, performance, art, the performance arts are. And this has to do with what Marta Rosla said on this book, uh, The Clase Cultural, that shows that those who are working in this field as a group, as a cultural class, which is trapped in a language and being somehow defeated from abroad by the logics of neoliberalism and how these logics are transferred into the way that are related with the territory and the, the forms, the ways that, that these uh, plays circulate. It is not quite an optimistic analysis to read it because it talks about a defeat, in fact. But I believe it's also good to read defeat stories when you are making decisions on programming related to the publics and the audiences, because obviously they call for um, generating or ins uh, having an incidence uh, from the point of view of uh, the exhibition, from the festivals, uh, or from the plays themselves. Sales. I believe that uh, we're in time for the five minutes uh, of relax, uh, and uh, thank you very much for your attention.